Tonight's lecture is entitled, Changing the Word. And this is quite a serious topic, and people get very excited about it. Verses affected in the Bibles, a rough count would give us the New American Standard Bible, 909 verses. That's a lot. The Revised Version, 788 verses. The New World Translation, 767. The NIV, 695. The Good News Bible, 614. The Amplified, 484. The Douay, which is the Jesuit Bible, has fewer changes than the New American Standard. In fact, less than half. Amazing. And the Reformation, of course, rejected this completely, but they're quite happy to accept these ones. Very strange. The old Jehovah's Witness Bible only had 120 verses affected. And when that came out, there was a huge hue and cry over the massive changes that they made. And today, nobody realizes that they're sitting with 909 verses affected, which makes the 120 look like a kindergarten. The New King James Version ignored the Textus Receptus 1,200 times. The Jehovah's Witness Bible is the first one that was changed. Matthew 16, verse 3, for example. If we go from there onwards, you'll see they removed that one, irrespective of what that text means. I'll show you later in the others that everything that was changed in the Jehovah's Witness Bible has also been changed in the other Bibles, or at least discredited in the margin, if nothing else. So they took... Uh, Matthew 16, verse 3 out. When it came to the book of Mark, they took verse 46 out. They had to cross it out. When it came to Mark 16, verses 9 to 20, well, they just took out the whole chapter. Because why? Because here Jesus appears physically after the resurrection, and that is a problem. You see, the esoteric world teaches that there is no physical resurrection. It is esoteric. And a physical Jesus having raised, been raised from the dead is a problem. So take out the chapter and modify the chapters other than Mark that are not quite as blatant on the issue. So if you have one of the modern translations, it will at least say in the margin that this is not found in the oldest manuscripts, but as we saw, the oldest manuscripts were already corrupt because they had the modifications of Oregon, as we will see. John 1, verse 1, in the New World Translation, that's the, the, the Bible of the Jehovah's Witnesses, as they have written it, it says there, in the beginning, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Whereas the King James says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So obviously, Jesus was God in the King James, but uh, he was a lesser being, if you like, with a lowercase g, when it comes to the uh, New World Translation. Then when it comes to John chapter 1, 11, uh, chapter 8, 11, up to verse 11, the whole series just gone. Just take a pen, ladies and gentlemen, cross it out. We no, need it no longer. We have found something better. Acts 8, verse 37 in the Jehovah's Witness Bible is, of course, removed because there Jesus is the only way to be saved. Away with that text. You'll find it missing in the others as well. 1 John 5, verse 7 is a major problem because there here Jesus is part of the Godhood. Gone. We'll come to that in the others as well. So that's what Jehovah's Witnesses did. They just took their pens and they crossed out all these relevant verses and whole portions of chapters and whole chapters. And there was a huge hue and cry about it.